So today we're going to answer the ultimate question of mathematics, how to find x. Okay, so the goal of this video is, as you can tell, to learn how to find x. But you should be comfortable with arithmetic, which is, you know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, like third grade stuff, of negative numbers and fractions, and also order of operations, PEMDAS, all that stuff. And as always, I advise you work alongside the video, aka you just write down what I write down and try to understand what I'm doing. So, what even is x? To find x, we must understand x. Well, x is an unknown value that makes the equ equal sign true. And the goal, again, is to find what x equals, i.e. x equals 5. Okay, and you're probably like, no shit, but like, you'll see what I mean. So, let's start with some basic examples now. And I know your math homework is probably 10 times harder than this, but let me tell you something. If you're on my YouTube channel, which has like 20 subscribers, you're probably desperate, so hang in there. So 2x equals 12 basically means 2 times what will equal 12? Well, hopefully you know your third grade multiplication tables and you say that the answer is 6. 2 times 6 equals 12. Okay, for the next one, we're going back to second grade. x minus 5 equals 1 is asking us, well, what number minus 5 is going to give us 1? And the answer is, again, 6, because 6 minus 5 equals 1. And you probably see where this is going. Yeah, it's x equals 6 for the third one, too. Because, well, after all, 6 divided by 3 equals 2. Okay, so let's take a closer look to that really easy example we just did. We have 2x equals 12. So the thing here is, we don't want 2x equals something. That's not useful. We just want x equals something. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of what we don't want. To get rid of the 2 that's being multiplied to the x, we can divide but by 2 because division is the opposite of multiplication. So what we're going to do is divide the left side by 2. 2x two divided by 2 is just an x. But the rule of equations is, if you do something to one side, you have to do it to the other side in order to maintain equality. So 12 divided by 2 is 6 leaving us the answer with x equals 6. So now we can look at those other two examples again and see, oh, what are we doing exactly? Well, for x minus 5 equals 1, we want to get rid of the minus 5 because we want x equals something, not x minus 5 equals something. So to undo a minus 5, we do the opposite. We plus 5 to both sides, leaving us with an x on the left side equals 6. And similarly, for the second one, x divided by 3 equals 2. Well, to get rid of the divide by 3 that we don't want, we multiply both sides by 3. Okay, so that leaves us with just an x on the left side because division and multiplication, so they just cancel each other out completely. And then on the right side, 2 times 3 equals 6. So that was pretty easy, but now, of course, things get harder with a 2x minus 7 equals 13. And this time, we have two things we don't want. We don't want a minus 7, and we don't want to multiply by 2 on the x. And the question here is, which one do you get rid of first? Okay, well, you get rid of the minus 7 first, and I'll explain why in a sec. But to get rid of the minus 7, again, we do the opposite by adding 7. Okay, so on the left side, now the minus 7 and plus 7 rule each other out, leaving us with just a 2x equals 13 plus 7. That's 20. And hopefully you know how to continue from here. We get rid of the divide by 2, and that equals x equals 10. But why do we get rid of the minus 7 first as opposed to the multiply by 2? Well, here's what happens when you divide by 2 first. Obviously, we want to get rid of 2x by multiple, dividing by 2. Okay. And what happens here is you end, you end up getting fractions because when you do something to a side, you have to do it to the entire side. So when you divide both sides by 2, you're not just dividing the 2x by 2, you're also dividing the minus 7 by 2. Okay. And like, obviously, this actually could still work. You could get the answer from here. It's just a bit harder since we have fractions. 
and fractions are annoying. So I advise the method I just showed you earlier. Okay, now sometimes you have more than one x term, and what you do here is you just combine the terms, so you just have a single x term. Okay, so I've highlighted the like terms in green. Um, anything with an x is a like term, and then all the numbers are like terms to each other. Okay, and notice how I've highlighted the minus sign in front of the 2. That's important. Always remember your minus signs. So 4x minus 2x, okay, that's just 4 minus 2 is 2x, plus 5, which doesn't change, equals 11. And hopefully you can finish the problem from here. Check with photo math that I'm sure all of you have on your phone already. And for this one, it's similar, except you have now x's on both sides of the equation. So um, remember, we just want x equals the answer when the answer is a number, not something with an x. So we want to get rid of x from the side of the equation we don't want it on. Okay, so usually I just get rid of it from the right side because I like my x terms on the left. So you can get rid of the x by doing a minus x. Okay, and that will give us 6x because 7x minus x is a 6x minus 11 equals just a 7. And hopefully you can finish from here. Here's a bit of a tougher example, and tougher just means more steps. So um, I always advise combining like terms first on both sides. Okay, so simplify the left side as much as you can, simplify the right side, and then do side swapping hocus pocus stuff. Okay, so I've highlighted the like terms, and we're just going to combine them. 8x minus 11x, okay, that's a minus 3x because 8 minus 11 is negative 3. And then a plus 6 plus a 16, that's just a 22. And on the right side, we don't have any like terms. It's already simplified, so we just leave it there. And we can continue from here. I'll just walk you through it because why not? So again, we only want x on one side of the equation. So I'm going to get rid of it on the right by doing a minus x on both sides. And that leaves us with a minus 4x because negative 3x minus an x is a negative 4x plus a 22 equals 10. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to highlight the minus signs in red. Just forgive that, please. And um, from here, okay, we don't want the plus 22 on the left side. We just want an x term. So we're going to do a minus 22 on both sides. Um, and that leaves us with a minus 4x equals 10 minus 22, that's a negative 12. So negative 4x equals negative 12, okay, divide both sides by negative 4, because we don't want that. That gives us x equals 3 as the answer. Now here's another example that's a bit tougher, we have some fractions this time. So first thing, you want to combine like terms, but there are not any like terms, so we're just going to skip that step. Um, we don't want the minus 3 quarters on the left side, so we're going to add the plus 3 quarters to both sides. And that leaves us with 1 half of x equals negative x plus 9 over 4 plus 3 over 4 is 12 over 4. 12 by 4 is 3. So right now we're at 1 half x equals minus x plus 3. Okay, now we only want x on one side of the equation again. So we want to get rid of the minus x. To do that, we're going to do the opposite by doing a plus x on both sides. Okay, now on the left side, 1 half x plus one other 1x is 1 and 1 half x, which is the same thing as 3 over 2 times x, and then equals 3 on the right side. Okay, and now to finish, you can divide both sides by 3 over 2, since we don't want that there. Um, that's the same thing as multiplying by 2 over 3, and that leaves us the answer x equals 2. Okay, so like sometimes the order in which you do these steps isn't that important. Like notice for this problem I do um, the plus 3 quarters first to get rid of that and before doing the plus x. You could do the plus x first and then do the plus 3 quarters. That doesn't really matter. You'll get the right answer either way. So yeah. So now um, let's do a special case where you get a weird answer. So here's an innocent looking problem. We're going to do the same thing. 
Um, okay, so in general, you want to combine like terms first. I think that's the easiest way to start because it simplifies the equation first. So on the left side, there's only one like term to combine. 3x minus 2x, that's just a 1x plus 7. On the right side stays the same, equals x plus 13. Okay, so again, we want x on only one side of the equation, so we're going to do a minus x from both sides. And that leaves us with 7 equals 13. And at first glance, it looks like we did something wrong, but we didn't. So, And this is a weird situation where the x cancels out, and like there's no x left after you do your simplification. And what that means is, like you get a special case where you either have no solution or infinitely many solutions. Yeah, I just included that there. Oops. And then x has no solution in this problem. And the reason is, like, it's because we got 7 equals 13, which is an obvious contradiction. That's not true. And what happens here is that nothing will work for x. So, like, whatever you substitute in for x is going to give you 7 equals 13. So, nothing will work basically and then the opposite case is where you do the same thing and you get a true statement you get 7 equals 7 and there are no x terms left when you get a true statement with just numbers this means that x has infinitely many solutions and that any value of x will satisfy the equation and will give you 7 equals 7 in the end which is which is good that's a true statement that's what we want so yeah, I'm not going to go over many examples with these because I think the idea is pretty simple. If you get a contradiction, no solutions. If you get a number equals a number that's true, then you get infinitely many solutions. So yeah, that's all I have for now. Um, hopefully you understood that. If you didn't, then that sucks. But yeah, bye.